Hey guys, Jessica Henry here. I'm just really excited to do this episode today. I decided to go live this week because I thought it would be um, just kind of fun and have just a really more interesting energy to it. So I have some ideas in mind that I wanted to show you. If you're part of our email newsletter, then um, earlier this week on Tuesday, you got an email saying um, what we're gonna be doing and some tips and techniques for this week's YouTube video. So in that video, I mentioned uh, painting skin tones and we're also gonna be talking about brushwork, but I'll talk about that more while I'm actually painting. So in this, I have um, a picture and I'm gonna show you what I do with this. And typically I won't use just a actual photograph, but I put it in a plastic sleeve. So if you want to just get a magazine, cut out some pictures of people's faces or even just parts of skin tone, what I want to show you that I'm gonna to do today is kind of an interesting thing in a way to practice doing um, skin tones on your palette. So I'm gonna take this like this and I am going to actually bring you a little bit closer here and try not to drop the camera. <laughs> All right, so on here, I'm gonna angle this down and gonna show you how a really clever way to practice mixing skin tones. So I have, um, I will just take just any brush. I got my paper towels and I'm gonna paint right on this. That's why I have her in a plastic sleeve. So this is my daughter years ago. I think that she would actually die if she knew I was <laughs> painting with her live. Okay, so here is her face, and I'm sorry there's a little bit of a glare on the plastic, but you get the point anyway. What I'm gonna do is start out with just a foundation of mixing color, skin tones. So to do that, I will grab just a yellow ochre, a little bit of alizarin crimson, and I carefully and slowly paint these two together. And then I'm gonna grab some white and just put it off to the side. Okay, now I paint those like this together and to see where I am in this sort of generic skin tone color. So depending on your race, nationality, whatever, you're gonna add varying shades of um, different colors. But for me, since my focus today on the demo painting as well as this little sample is Caucasian, so, um, I'm taking white, a little bit of alizarin, and yellow ochre. So I have this color here, and you can go directly on your um, painting, or your photograph here, and just test it. See if the color you painted is close to anywhere you see on your picture. So if you actually print out the picture of me, if you're doing that self-portrait along with me, you can print out a second one and practice the skin tones just right on the picture. Okay, so that's, that's pretty close, okay? So I just, sorry about that. I just applied that color directly onto the photograph right here. Okay, so if you think it needs a little bit more alizarin crimson and white for some of the rosier cheeks parts um, there, you can add a little dab of that. Add a little bit of cadmium red and cadmium yellow and to the white, and it'll give you a little bit lighter mixture of skin tone. Um, I have some announcements I'm going to be talking about while I'm painting today. So I'm excited to share with those. Okay, so I'm testing this right up here on her forehead. So that is white and cadmium yellow, cadmium red. So you see that, how that, sorry about that, kind of kind of shows up in that area there. A little bit more alizarin, or excuse me, a little bit more cadmium red to her cheeks. And it gives it that rosier look like that one right there. <laughs> okay, so that's that's where we're, what you can do with this. So you can cut out all kinds of different races and tape them to your palette and just spend an afternoon just figuring out mixing colors. Okay, so I'm gonna just leave these colors right here on my palette and I will hold my palette up today so you can see what I'm doing. And I'll talk about my supplies and everything that I have going on. Good to see you guys. And if I miss your comments, I will try to get at them after uh, the video is posted. So let me get you kind of straight on as much as possible. All right, so that's a little bit better. And I know that that's kind of washed out and hopefully if you have this image at home that you've printed out and you can get a better color representation for that. So I'm gonna hold my palette up like this today and show you what I am mixing as I go along. So when I start with a portrait, I like to start with the shadows and build up the form first. So in this value study, I have the, um, the values pretty much the way 
the darkness and the depth that I have them that I want them. I may adjust some drawing issues as I'm going along um, and just tweak things here and there. But for now, I'm just gonna start with what I need to get going. So working, looking at my photo over here, I'm gonna start with a little bit of burnt sienna and I might just take it into some of this mixture here that I already had. Alizarin crimson, maybe a little yellow ochre. In this photograph, everything is really, really warm. And so, and that just means like a golden um, amber tone. But in real life, you have a balance of cool and warm. So in my shadows, I'm gonna paint them a little bit cooler tending towards the blue and purple family because you can't have warm shadows and warm highlights. You may have that in a photograph, but you don't want that in a painting because it won't look like reality. So I'm mixing up over here just a kind of a darker violet. I've taken burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and this is going to be my darkest skin tone. So I'm starting over here off to the side, way over here, because I'm going to be building to lighter over here. And you can see I keep my white here and my darker colors over here. So as I'm painting, I keep that um, as my general mindset on the palette. Okay, so when I squint down at my painting over here, I'm going to allow my brush strokes and application of paint to follow the form of the face in just the areas where it's this color, this darker color. So when I squint down at this picture, I see this darker color that I mixed up right about in there, maybe a little bit where the hairline meets the forehead. I'm gonna add a little bit of linseed oil to what I'm mixing because that just softens up this paint just a little bit. And then I see it in this eye socket, definitely in here and a little down here where the eye turns and goes under. And then I see it down here in the area where the mouth and tucks back into the chin. And then a little bit down here, a little bit on that ear. And there's just a touch of it under the chin. So if you notice when I applied these brush strokes, I was allowing my brush to follow the form. That's very important that, that those are allowed to do that. Okay, so now I still wanna work on the darker areas and you can kind of see that there's a little bit of a purpley tint to that. So I'll hold this up so you can see it. Maybe you see that, yeah, you can see it. It's a little bit more of that violet in the shadows. What I'm gonna do now as the painting, as these shadows get a little bit lighter, I'm gonna add a little bit more burnt sienna, yellow ochre, because that'll lighten it a little bit. I don't want to try to use white all the time to lighten something. It just tends to make it look chalkier. So I don't want to, I don't want to push that too much. Yellow ochre has a certain amount of opacity, which works with lightening something. You could use Naples yellow. I don't have it on my palette, but that is another good one. Okay, so that's a pretty good shadow colors. So I just have a little mixture. I always just test it and see what that looks like. So I think that as I look back and forth from here to there, I'm examining is that color going to be about the right shade. Uh, it looks pretty good. I'm going to add a little bit more linseed oil. Sometimes linseed oil helps you stretch your pile a little bit longer. <laughs> it thins it a little so you can use it longer. I see it as I squint again. I see this little bit lighter shadow color in a few places. And so when I'm painting a portrait, you'll see I often jump around and that's really because what I have on my brush, I can use in other places. So there's no point in wasting the time and saying, okay, I'm just gonna paint the eyes and you mix up all those as you're going along and then you think, oh, I could have used that color down here. So just, you can economize your time that way. Um, just working out like that. Okay, so I'm also seeing some down here. Again, just cognizant of how my brush is defining the form in that eyebrow area. Like sometimes I roll all the excess paint off my brush like this, and then I scoop. And I can conserve that color that I like. Instead of wiping it off on my paper towel all the time, I can conserve it by twirling it on my palette and pulling 
and then scooping it. Everything is, is all about saving time and the cost too. I mean, there's no point in, um, you know, getting rid of paint unnecessarily. Okay, so as I squint down, I'm just trying to determine, is there anywhere else that I see this color in this image? And I think I pretty much have that. So I'm taking this um, as I, I'm sorry, hold on just a minute. It's saying I'm low on battery, but I don't understand why. I'm plugged in. <laughs> Sorry, technical difficulties. Okay, hopefully we're plugged in. All right, I can't see, so. <laughs> um, okay, anyway. If I lose you, then this is part two and I will make a part three immediately after. <laughs> Something wrong with my cords. Okay, well, anyway, moving on. Okay, so I have examined this to see if there's anywhere else I can put this color, and I think that that pretty much covers that. All right, now mixing this up a little bit lighter, taking some yellow ochre, and I'm looking at the next area of the shadows where it's a little bit lighter. So yellow ochre, and I might just grab some of that white and alizarin cad red mixture right in here. So there's a slight um, gradation here. Watercolor portrait, it, uh, it's possible. <laughs> That's a little bit of a different um, situation with the watercolor, and so I could definitely consider doing that. Um, again, allowing my brush strokes here to define the form. This is a little bit lighter now, so as I'm moving towards the lit side of the face, what is in shadow over here? That's probably a little too dark. I'm just gonna get a little bit lighter passage and just cover that up. Okay, and coming over here. And on the chin. So if I miss your comments, I will um, try to catch them um, at the end. So I've added a little bit of red to this chin passage in here and the top lip over here. As it extends into shadow and it's pretty much the side of the nose too. Just get that in there like that. Top of the nose over here. I'll be lightening that a little bit. And the bridge of the nose here starts to have a softer transition from that dark shadow color here to the bridge where it breaks. And I made that too light. So worried my phone is gonna, um, or my camera here is gonna die. So let me just plug it in real quick. Excuse me, with these live videos, there's always, never know what kind of technical difficulty you're gonna encounter. So I don't wanna have to redo things. So I'm going to just adjust this real quick. Hopefully we don't have any more issues. Thank you for your patience. All right, back to this. Hopefully that solved everything. Back to this color that I had here. Um, see a little bit under the eye over here as well. And I see it along the hairline too, where the hair meets the face. Just keeping that edge really soft um, 
where that has that transition. Okay. Down here on the neck. Might as well just try to paint as much as you can with whatever you see that specific color in. So I'm seeing uh, the neck here. I keep saying her, her neck. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, all right, so let's get into, that's, that's okay for those middle tone areas, middle tone, darker areas. Um, just got a little bit here I'm seeing on the bridge of the nose. And I will work on some of that a little bit too and a little bit here. All right, now the warmth of the hair is kind of creating this glow on the cheek over here. So I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna grab some of that with some yellow ochre and cadmium red, like that. And just paint that in. Now the cheek, you do want it to have a feeling of expanse this way because when you think about the topography of the, the face, the nose has the flat bridge that comes down like this, and then the, the sides of the nose angle that way, and then the cheek comes this way, and then the side of the cheek goes back that way. So you really want to use your brush strokes to identify that form. So here, I'm going to let the angles of my brush work to explain that right there keeping it that way. A little bit more alizarin crimson in there. And what I decided to do today is to work on this painting with you guys and talk about um, brush strokes and color mixing. And then, um, but it won't be entirely as finished as I will carry the whole painting. So, and I, in another episode, I'll show you what all finished. <laughs> all right, so this is just a slight bit of um, this alizarin crimson, cadmium red, and some white. So if you're following along, um, I'm trying to tell you what you're gonna need for mixing. All right, so burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, just working on getting some of these now on the shadow side a little bit more clearly defined. I'm wiping my brush off in between dealing with the different color areas. So here's this shadow, and I'm kind of cleaning that up, defining the form a little bit more this way, letting my brush strokes form that way, coming over across and down, and then up in here, up, and then over, like that. Okay, let's just take a little bit of dark for the eyebrow. Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine Blue, that gives you a really nice dark. And I wanna get that anchor in because it helps to give you a value extreme. And having a value extreme gives you a base to um, make other comparisons with. So, it's pretty just uh, simple like that. Make that a little bit softer on the bottom and let that kind of drip into shadow there. And then the same for the eye. And just since I'm working on that side, I'll just get that darker value in place. And then I'll cover that up with hair a little bit in that passage. Okay, so. Now I'm taking a little bit of time. And so if I stop talking, it's because I'm looking back and forth to see, okay, what next? Um, this is a little tiny bit of skin color as I had it down below, it's too bright but the white of the eye is often just sort of a skin color. And so I'm just suggesting that in there just a little bit. Okay. 
All right, now I'm cut, dipping back into some of this darker mixture that I had, the sienna and alizarin, to clean up this passage here along the cheek where the hair is creating a shadow. That was a little bit lost. Keeping that soft and light like that. Okay, back to this. And where these different value passages connect, where the, like this chin has a lighter tone, where it's connecting with this darker shadow, instead of blending them, I'm just taking and, and making a softer brush stroke by not pressing hard. Let me not just do that. Okay, so um, let's grab some alizarin, or it's, what is that, cad yellow and some cad red. What I want to do is to clean up some, like this um, highlight on the cheek down in there just a little bit. Just see what this does. Okay, that works. Maybe a little bit more red in there. All right, wipe my brush off. So this passage in here, whoops, where the, um, the nose meets the face, I think I have it not quite right, so I'm gonna come in here and just soften and clean that a little bit. It was a little too harsh and not the right value. It needed to be a little bit darker under there. So bringing that back around. Okay, um, moving ahead. Okay, so I'm pretty comfortable with the shadow side. Now I'm gonna move over towards the lit side, but I'm still gonna keep with the middle tones that I see over here, not the brightest whites yet, or brightest lights. Also bearing in mind too, that the lightest light is hitting at the top of the forehead up in here, and then it trickles down to be darker down here. So I don't wanna paint the chin highlight as bright as this highlight because it, then it would look too straight on. Since the light's coming down from this way, it has to have that cascade of movement. Okay, so still, still keeping with the darker middle tone values on the lit side, taking some of the white into, and now that's all gonna be warmer tones, so I'm gonna use a little bit more of the cadmium yellow and cadmium red and some white. This is going to be my darker value on this side. Cleaning, remember I said I was gonna clean this passage up a little bit in here, I didn't like where that was going. Um, I was asked, uh, I don't know, about a week ago, if I would demonstrate um, painting freckles. And, well, I have some freckles, so <laughs> I thought I would just put a few in and um, show you how I would do something like that. So I'm uh, laying this brighter red passage where I see sort of more of this glow showing through. And I'm not worried about the highlight on the nose quite yet. It's important, but I don't need to worry about it at this moment because um, I'll paint that in later. This is always kind of the, the ugly stage of the painting because it looks all piecemeal and kind of weird, but that's okay. I, 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 I've lost my, <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Yeah, if you guys see me looking kind of, because whatever, we all, we've all painted. If you've tried portraits, you know, you know. <laughs> so. Okay, so I'm taking, this is just a little bit lighter color mixture here now that we started mixing up. Um, white, yellow ochre, some of that alizarin, or it's cad red and cad yellow that I had here. Just a little bit more white to it, where there's this softer transition. Again, thinking about the forehead having this more expansive across going this way. If you did your color studies um, on your palette of the different skin tones, you could actually take notes of the different 
colors and the amounts that you used to mix those different colors and have your notes. You could make charts and things like that. Um, I wanted to tell you too while I'm painting that um, the color in your life, put some color in your life video or episode is up and running and we're so excited. Uh, I'll put a link to that below because I know a lot of you had been asking when is it going to be up and um, I promised I would share a link and so that is going to happen. That's up. Actually, it was live last night all over the world. So it's very exciting. Anxious to share that. And uh, we had a, a great time in San Diego filming with Richard Sturgles and Alan Freeman. This is um, Graham Stevenson's show out of Australia. And... Uh, they really do a wonderful job on that. So that is up and running. And yeah, getting good response. So I hope you guys watch it and let me know what you think. I'll try to re respond to comments on there as well. All right, okay, so sorry, I'm just painting and not <laughs> rambling on and on. Okay, so I've just taken the different two red, the red and yellow here, the cad red, cad yellow, and a little bit of white. And I'm just laying it in, in nice soft strokes where I see this lighter value, thinking about sculpting again, um, where I see these lighter passages. I'm gonna grab some of this little bit darker passage in here because as the cheek recedes back, it's gonna start picking up more of what is in the background. So in this case, I see more yellow ochre down. Remember I said cascade down the face, it's gonna be less and less and less down this way. Coming down like that, where the chin comes out a little bit. It's just a little bit lighter tone in there, so I'll grab some white into that. So we also released today um, a new video that we've been working on. I had mentioned doing the ocean waves and seascapes. If you watched um, a live video I put up earlier this week, promoting it, uh, really excited about it. It's, you know, I, I love the ocean and it's just, it's power and majesty and, and I love painting it too. So if you enjoy it also, that's a great video set to watch. And I'll put a link to that below as well. Okay, so painting this um, chin, just keeping that. It's a little bit too dark, so I'm just going to get um, another brush. I'm picking up some of the softer, darker value in here, and I'm getting a different brush because I don't want to clean the, the brush that I'm using off yet because there's a color on it that I'll be painting in other places. So I'm just using a, a clean one just to clean that up. All right, so now the top part of the lip, I think I need to bring down a little bit. So I am going to angle this just, just the slightest bit. Like that. And you can make those alterations as you're going through your painting. You don't, I mean, it's ideal to have your first layer as good as you can get it. Um, but even still as you're painting, they're just things you're gonna have to tweak along the way. All right, and then um, now I'm going to work on this passage in here with the nose. So there's a little bit brighter area on right up on the bridge of the nose. So that's white and cadmium yellow with a little bit of that red that's underneath. There's a nice bright spot there. And then where the side of the nose is picking up light in here. And I, since I have this bright color mixed up, I'm gonna use it up here on the temple where the temporal bone makes a turn right in this passage. And it'll be under the eyebrow too, just a bit. And then hitting the cheekbone, just as it, remember, as it trickles down like this, there's this digression of light. 
same with the nose. Let's, let's get that on there just so it has some form. Okay. Where to next? A little bit of the cadmium red down here and some of the white. I just want a soft pinker tone so that I can come back up in here and just start cleaning up some of these forms in this area. Let's get some more alizarin in there. A little bit cad red, a little bit of white. So you can see skin tones are really just a simple mixture of varying shades of orange. So you've got a couple yellows here to work from and about three reds. You have cad red light, or that's medium, burnt sienna and alizarin crimson. That gives you all kinds of different ranges and possibilities in there. up like this. I think that that shadow in here by the nose needs to have a little bit more um, integrity to the shape. A little bit more depth in here. So I'm mixing up a little bit of a alizarin with the blue. Just keeping whatever I had on my brush and then adding to it. That gives a little bit more of that cooler tone that you see typically around eyes. Grabbing some of that whiter mixture. Right up in here. I want to maintain the integrity of the eye socket because that'll give you a distinct likeness to whatever portrait you're painting. Make sure that you get that, the, or you have a good enough photo that you get that lighting around the eye socket. Give you that form. Usually right here at the corner of the eyebrow, there's a softer turning of the skull. And so you can pull that out with just a little flick of the brush a little bit. right up like that. Oh, somebody had asked if I was related to Amy Adams on the next, last video. Uh, the answer is no. <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. So. <laughs> but I guess thanks for asking anyway. <laughs> okay, that's a little better. I'm um, putting this eyebrow back in. Got kind of chopped up. That is just ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Okay, so I'm just taking some of that skin color and for the white of the eye. And if you, the, the secret to painting effective eyes is to keep everything really, really soft around it. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. I mean, you can't, you don't want to make them all blurry because then that just doesn't look good either. But you have to, if you make really sharp lines around in the eye area, it's not going to read. It'll, it'll look kind of drawn and makeup-y and a little bit weird. But this brush is a little bit large for this passage, but kind of just trying to get some information down there so that I can move on to something else in the face. Okay. Now, um, what I need to do at this point is start to refine some of this, um, the form around the eyes. And then I'm putting these brush strokes down and they have kind of a sharp edge. So I'm coming back through with the uh, wiped off brush. I just wiped everything off. 
and with a really soft pressure and barely lifting and that softens an edge. So instead of blending like this, you don't want to do that. Where you, oh, I'm sorry, you can't even see. <laughs> Where you're sweep, sweep, sweeping like this. Don't You don't want to do that. You just want to keep it um, just soft and a clean little like that. All right, so coming back in through here, as the skin now is starting to turn down here by the nose, I want to grab some of this kind of medium light skin tone color in here, which was white, cad red, cad yellow. And putting this down like this starting to read a little bit more accurate. I'm noticing that this value piece that I put on the bridge of my nose, the value is just a little bit off. So I want to lighten that. And I'm on this passage on the bridge of the nose, I'm using a horizontal brush stroke like this. It's kind of like painting tree trunks too. I, I try to, instead of just going straight down on a tree trunk, using these shorter horizontal lines gives you um, a little bit more of an interest in the, um, the quality of that surface. A little lighter in here as I get this form a little bit more accurate. I think I'm going to move these things over. Let's see if I can a little bit. It's a little easier for you to see. The shine on the edge of the nose down here. Just That's again, that's just my lighter tone that I've been using for the lighter area. And just put a little suggestion of it. Oops, that's too bright. On the shadowed side of my nose. up a little bit of the nostril color, uh, just a sienna, darker, oops, it's not a darker mixture that we had here. So I would suggest too, if you're following along, to watch this video separately and then you can, you're able to better pause it as you need to and catch up or, or whatever. So, all right, I think I am going to grab a little bit smaller brush now as I'm getting into some of these smaller areas. This is uh, that first one, in case anyone was wondering, is a uh, um, size six filbert. This one is a size three. Uh, size two is acceptable too if you have that one. Okay, so I'm just taking some of that neutral um, pink tone as I'm working on the nose a little bit in here. Um, it's hard to see sometimes what I'm doing. Lizard Crimson, a little bit of Cad Yellow. And I'm getting the side of the nose here too. Sometimes you have to go back through and kind of redo your drawing. So you can draw your lines straight up and just to make sure that things don't get out of whack while you're working on them, that can happen. And I'm seeing this color up there. <laughs> okay, back down here. Reshaping the tip of the nose. Oops. I'm just kind of defining some of these angles a little bit more in here. Noses are some of my favorite things to do 
I like all these subtle angles and shifts in the values and the way that the light bounces up and gets the bottom of it and all that. I, I think it's really interesting. And just seeing other areas that need working on while working on another area is very normal. <laughs> Jumping around. Seeing that that passage up there at the eyebrows had needed some help. I will get some of the hair in too today. Also double checking to main sh maintain the integrity of my three angles. You know, I don't, I'm not really happy with what's happening with the mouth. So I'm gonna take some burnt sienna, alizarin crimson. And now I'm gonna just kind of work on this area a little bit more too. I've got this little, little triangle back in here. I want to get that shape just right. And back on this side, I'm going to put a little bit of ultramarine blue in that mixture just because it really makes it darker back here. And I'm, I'm locking my pinky on the edge of my canvas to help um, stabilize my hand a little bit. I'm checking. I'm also, I'm flicking my eye back and forth. I know you can't see my head, but I, that's what I'm doing is just double checking that my measurements in here are still, um, that I'm still okay with, or if I need to adjust things that I can do that still. Coming from above, softening this edge on this uh, top lip, just using the tip of my brush just for that. Same thing with down below, laying my pinky on the edge and taking the brush. I pretty much wiped the paint off my brush and now I'm just a really little subtle uh, maneuvering of the brush gives you that softened edge. Okay, let's get the mouth a little bit more done. Um, cad red, alizarin. How are we? So I always just, sometimes, you know, a lot of painting is a guess. Would this mixed with this work? Try it, see what happens. It, you can always mix up a new color if it's not right. Flick your eye back and forth. Where does it need adjusting? Where does the edge need to be softened? Lost? Whatever. A little highlight. Again, just using the tip of this brush. And then as that mouth turns and goes into shadow, I'm going to use a little bit more alizarin in that over here. Now I had also promised that I was gonna work on teeth and show you how I paint those. So um, I will get to that here soon too. And teeth I try to keep just as unified and just a, a single mass. So I'm gonna get all the red out of my brush I need a new paper towel because if you try to use a, a gross, dirty old paper towel, when you go to wipe your brush off on it, and if you want to stick with just a clean white, 
then you'll end up with whatever color is contaminating on your paper towel, right in your brush. Okay, so teeth. Um, grabbing a little bit of yellow ochre and white, a little bit of that skin color. As they recede back in the mouth, they get darker back there. So let's add a little bit of grayness to that with some ultramarine blue. So I'm gonna let that be like it's emerging out of there. Now I'm squinting down and I don't really care at this moment that there are individual teeth. Right now I just care that um, I'm squinting down and painting that as a value mass. So that gray color in here, scoop it up. And I'm losing that dark little triangle back in there, which is very important. So I'm going to put that back in. Keeping that angle of that triangle just right will give you also the tilt of the head because if the teeth aren't tilting the way the head is tilting, they're, they're going to look weird. So they have to be um, at the same angle. So I am just double checking this in here. Same thing with over there. Okay. Now along the lower lip line, hope I'm not in the way. Just going to suggest where the lip touches the teeth. Oh, right in there. Okay. Looks like I'm laughing. <laughs> okay. A uh, little bit more white into that mixture. coming from above. I want these to have a softer, if they're really sharp and crisp and clearly painted, strong edges, it's gonna look weird. They're gonna look like, kinda like ventriloquist doll painted on creepy teeth. So keep them really quiet and um, subdued. You don't wanna make them too dark and dingy gray either, they'll look bad. Um, but I don't think that teeth should be avoided because a, a beautiful smile or if you're painting, um, teeth have a lot of character. You don't want to avoid something just because you're afraid of it. I, I say rush headlong into things that you're afraid of. <laughs> Whatever's a challenge, go for it. Okay, so that top lip needs a little bit of form underneath. So where it comes down to the teeth, I'm just going to paint that softened right onto that passage in there. And then again as it turns into shadow. Now to show just a subtle differentiation between just a few of the teeth, all you have to do is go flip, just a little flip. I'm going to go right in the middle and then um, maybe a little bit off to this side. Just take some of that darker and go right up. You don't have to go all the way up, but just a little bit will suggest that there's some separation in there. And then from the, the top, just go down a little bit. So if your brush is mostly dry, you can you can have an easier time moving just those little flicks around, <laughs> little flicks. But remember, if these teeth get off, if their angle is off, then the whole thing's going to feel wonky. So again, just cleaning up some of these edges here. And 
this edge is too hard, so I'm going to bring this down. So now I'm going to work on the nose here just to really kind of give this the final push at this moment. Okay. And just right on top. And it may be a little bit hard to see what I'm doing, but. I'm just cleaning up some of these where the brush stroke was a little too pronounced or whatever. And I'm going to take a little bit of the my light highlight now and pop this in right on the corner of that nose where it, it turns. And that gives the illusion of it coming forward. corner of the eyebrow, I just want a little softer. Because if the forehead is getting that much light hitting it, then it would stand a reason that the eyebrow is there as well. Okay. So let's, I'm grabbing some of this darker skin tone as I'm looking at this. needs a little bit of work on this shadow passage in here. as it comes down by the mouth. And a little bit of the highlight color. You see some of these areas where it needs a little bit of reform. So I'm noticing that I have some things just a little bit off in here. So I'm going to make some adjustments here. So if I'm quiet for a little bit, that's because I am tweaking some of these things here. And then um, this is not in the right place. So this comes like this and it's a lot closer to the edge of the mouth than what I have it I don't know how these things happen but whatever let's fix it okay that's in a better location and I see that over here too This passage in here is getting improved. <laughs> are we not always a work in progress? Yes, yes we are. Okay, so where this cheek is turning, I want to lay some brush strokes down this way to help really make the apple of that cheek look like it's coming forward like that. So I'm also going to put a little bit of cadmium red and some white. If I use cadmium red on the fleshy part of the cheek, it really has, you don't want to overdo it, but it really does look alive. So I'm just going to put a little tiny bit in there. Just like that. Let's 
off in that area where it comes up to the nose. You don't want that to be a sharp passage in there, or again, it'll kind of look sneery. <laughs> you don't want to don't want to make it look like someone's sneering. So I'm just getting a little bit lighter mixture right here to fix. But you can see too how just by a few simple colors you can um, you can come up with all these different ranges of skin tones while you're painting, and um, it's pretty. It's you know it's not that complicated. The more paints you put out on your palette, uh, the the more difficulty you'll have because you'll you'll be wondering, oh, what did I use to mix that? And I don't remember. And then your painting starts to take on sort of this it doesn't have a color harmony but this way I mean you can't not have color harmony everything comes from everything that's on your palette it's just really simple simple color mixtures so this passage that I just did here under the eye the little bit like that that is showing where the eye socket turns and comes down the zygomatic bone is right here and then it ends so there's this slight concavity in the face where the sinus passage here ends, the cheekbone is over here, and then there's sort of a, a subtle difference there. Okay, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit more of that light there where I see that coming through. While I'm thinking about it, I'm taking the point of my brush and I'm gonna just put in a little shine in the eye while I'm just thinking about it. I know it's not there, but keeping it small, if you make it too big, it'll look like cataracts. So <laughs> keep it really small. And it has to kind of make sense too, where the eye is shaped. Okay, so that's, oops, I need my finger there. Okay, now I'm feeling pretty good about where things are going as far as the overall applying paint to the face and moving around the structure. I, the contour of this isn't quite right, so I'm going to come back through here and just work on some of those, this exterior form. So to do that, I'm going to use the background hair color in some of these darker areas, burnt sienna, a little bit of a, a ultramarine blue to fix these outside form shapes comes down to the ear and then it, it, it kind of dips in right here and then this form under the ear lobe coming down this way has a different angle to it okay that is a little better Lizarin, or what is that, burnt sienna and yellow ochre. As I'm coming up here to the hairline, I want to work a little bit on softening this here too. And that's okay to just take your finger every now and then, soften those edges. gave myself a five o'clock shadow. <laughs> Not good. Okay, let's shave that back a little bit more. Okay, coming into focus. I am gonna take a clean brush now and I'm going to just soften some of these passages where I see some gloppy brush strokes and just working on the light areas with this brush and looking to where I can lose an edge or 
just kind of move things around a little bit that way. It makes it look more interesting. And it gives it sort of a sense of energy too. And I noticed that some of my brush work had a little bit choppier appearance. So as I'm working down, I'm wiping my brush off, still only really concentrating on the lit areas. I'll use a different brush when I get into the shadowed parts. And that just kind of keeps it a little bit more subtle in there. Okay, it's a different brush for, oh, got my rosemary right here. Let's see what it can do. So all my shadowed areas coming in and uh, it's not with the purpose of blending, like blend, 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 but it's more like just losing an edge here and there. Still maintaining the integrity of the angle of the brushwork, I don't want to lose that altogether. Okay, I'm going to just put a little bit of paint on the neck now, and then I'll do the hair. Okay, so neck. Um, I just had this pile of yellow ochre. Oh, I got into the white. Yep, that happens. <laughs> Trick is to not get it all over my clothes. All right, maybe a little more yellow ochre. I'll add some oil in there, thin that down a little bit. Let's grab some of the white. That's fine. I'm just gonna put just a little bit on there. And let's get into some of the yellow and the red with some white. Oops. So it's no big deal if you make a mistake. Just get another color. Mix up what you need. Oil paint is so forgiving. You just say, oh, okay, maybe I meant to do that. Esophagus. Sort of, maybe that's too bright. Let's just darken that a little. I d one thing you don't want the neck to do is to really just stand out. It's the neck is more part of the background, so keep that really quiet. Okay. That is kind of about as far as I want to push that right now. Uh, softening the chin neck passage in here. Now I'm gonna get in the hair. So I think what I'll do, whew, that almost went flying. <laughs> um, oh, okay, <laughs> let me see what I can do. Somebody said the chin needs to be a little bit wider. All right, let me see what I, got. let's, you're probably right, that looks good. Let's do that a little bit more like this. All right, thanks for that. <laughs> Just look over there and I get a, uh, perspective, you know, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, you can kind of see that on there. Okay, so I'm just lowering this a little bit so that I can get the, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, getting the top now, let's get the hair in there. Um, taking some yellow ochre. I should have worn my watch. I have no idea how long this video is. I hope you guys are all all right. Thank you for watching, if you're still watching. Um, let's get into some cab yellow, a little red. Seeing that's just where I see some of the brighter um, colors up in here. Oops. And then where the sun is trying to shine through it, I want to put this more brilliant 
hair color in here. Where else? Down here. Yeah. Okay, that's working. And on the outside. I'm anxious to do these ones that are flying across my face because I think that they have an interesting effect. So I will get to those. Um, okay, just right into that mixture. I'm going a little bit darker now with some burnt sienna. Just where I see these swatches. It's important that that darker area is in there, so I'll pull, I'll pull that back out. Still a little bit too light the color that I have on my brush for that passage so I want that to be a little darker but I see it in here okay I'm gonna focus on this so that I can put the painting back up on my board okay ultramarine blue burnt sienna that's my darker hair color um, burnt sienna a little bit more burnt sienna than blue blue uh, to the mixture will give make it a lot more black. All right, sculpting out this form a little bit more. Just trying to think about the form here too as the hair starts to cascade down into this whole temporal area keeping that flat and clean right in here i'm going to add a little bit of cadmium red to this mixture over here and it sort of creates this glowing brown that i see right in here I try to think of hair in terms of being in different mass chunks and um, that gives it more of a sense of body rather than individual strands. So let's get some oil in here and thin this down a little bit. Okay, now these darker areas on this side where it's glowing, get those in place. And also on this, this area of the painting where there's kind of hair flying, you don't want it to look fussied and labored over. So I gotta set my palette down. Um, just keeping that light and airy will give it more of that illusion of being blown around. And no sharp edges. Everything really soft and muted. Okay, uh, oh, also, I'm often asked if these paintings are for sale, and just, just as a heads up, this one is not. It's already claimed, um, but I'll do others. I have others. <laughs> okay, oops, grabbing some more of that cadmium orange, mix, orange mixture back in there. Okay. Before I get too much into the hair over there, I want to um, clean this brush off and I'll get some more of that um, cadmium yellow back in there. So grabbing into just straight yellow, maybe a little bit of white. Just gonna pull out a little bit more of what that was for that glowing effect. without trying to fussy it and get fussy. Just 
just take some white. Just run that right off the edge of the canvas because I think that looks cool right off like that. I'm giving it some whimsy. Whew, like that. Makes it look like some of these strands are picking up some light. Be careful, there's danger in having too much fun. It can start to look, <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> okay, that's fine with that. Uh, outside of the head, let's just give this a little bit of, like a, up here and on the top. Oh, you can't see that. Cadmium yellow. Let's get some of that red in there. Cadmium red and yellow and white. Just a little white. We need more yellow. I'm going to take this and just kind of cascade it like that. Just press and lift as you drop. Okay, I don't like that whiteness. <laughs> so I'm gonna, if I don't like a stroke, I just go right over the top. All right, so let's get the hair is growing, blowing across the face. Some of this sienna, that orange stuff I had over here coming around. Okay, I'm sitting back. I'm letting this just sort of, where's it gonna go? Press and lift and turn. A little bit, and there's just a few more over here. Okay, I don't like how those are one, two, three, so I'll unite those a little bit. And then um, as this sort of comes around like that, just go like that a little. Okay, I'm gonna pull out a little bit more of the glow on this side, yellow and white. kind of fun. Just playing with the paint, letting it swirl. I even take this into the background a little bit. Oh, sorry. Just a thin layer. I'm just playing with this. You can up with your own whatever for the backgrounds. I just want a, a platform or a, a means of being able to soften the edge of the head. So that is what that was all about. Okay, now um, just a few more things in here. Oh, I suppose I should suggest um, the shirt, just a little. I'm not going to do the whole pattern, but um, let's just select ultramarine blue. Um, we'll go into maybe a soft green. 
I don't know. Maybe I'll change my mind. <laughs> Let's just see what happens. You don't need anything really specific, just the idea, more or less. That's all that's really necessary. Okie dokie. And that is where I'm drawing the line on this painting. Let me back this up a little bit. <sighs> okay, <laughs> that is it. All right, you guys, I wanted to thank you so much for joining me and, I'm oh, sorry. All right, oh, there's a glare on that, sorry. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for joining me. This was a lot of fun. And again, join our email newsletter and I will send uh, tips and techniques on Tuesdays with Renaissance Creative Art Tips. So um, that, and that'll give you a heads up for what I'm gonna be doing um, on this, the Friday YouTube. All right, well, that is it. And um, be sure to check us out on Put Some Color in Your Life and uh, check us out on Renaissance Academy Fine Arts. We are getting um, uh, this whole new year planned and up and running. We're having a great time and um, check us out. Okay, thank you guys. And I will see you next week. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.